Hello. Today we're going to actually read two stories. The first one um, is to help us understand the vocabulary a little bit. And the second one is a longer story. And the question we are going to think about today is how do changes in the weather affect us? For example, when it changes from sunny to rainy to maybe windy, um, that, that impacts us in some way. Right, here are the words we're going to take a look at. I'm going to get them all up there. All right. A volcano. Most of you know what that is. They explode. They have lava in them. Awaken. That's when you're sleeping and you wake up. You awaken. Cliff. Okay, we have those up here where we have some land and then we have a really deep valley or a canyon. That part where it falls down is called a cliff. I think you all know what a rainbow is. I don't need to explain that one. A prize, premio. You all know what a prize is. We get them all the time in class. A mountain that has a peak. We know what a mountain is. We have mountains around us, don't we? And the last word is suffer. That's when something feels very painful. Um, it could be pain in your heart, but it could also be you can suffer if you've been, you hurt your arm or you've hurt your leg meaning you're feeling hurt. You can feel hurt emotionally, but you can also feel hurt with your body. The first story is called Hector and the Scarecrow. There is not a picture for this one, so I'm just going to read it to you. Hector heard people tell and retell stories about the volcano near his home. They said that it was a scary place. They said everything there could talk, even the trees and rocks. Hector disagreed. He did not think it could be that scary, so he quietly left his home one morning. He did not want to awaken, wake up, the other people in town. They would try to stop him if they were awake. Hector climbed the volcano. He reached some cliffs near the top. Tall green corn stalks grew on the cliffs. A single scarecrow stood nearby. The scarecrow wore a red coat, blue pants, and a yellow hat. He looks like a rainbow. What a prize, thought Hector. Then the scarecrow said, Oh, hello there. Hector was amazed. The scarecrow spoke, but it sounded kind of sad. Hector asked, is something wrong? The scarecrow said, I dislike this place. I want to visit a different mountain. Hector did not want to see the scarecrow suffer. He said, come home with me. We will sleep tonight. Tomorrow, I will help you find another mountain. And this is the second story. The first tortilla. How do changes in the weather affect us when outside the world is different? Hade opened her eyes and yawned. She knew she had slept late because the sun had already risen. Time to awaken, Princess Hade, her mother whispered. She was crushing dry chile pods in a metate. Time to greet the sun, her father said. He was weaving a basket. Each day, Hade's parents went to the village market to sell their colorful baskets. Hade jumped out of the hammock and greeted her parents. After breakfast, she hurried outside to water the garden. A huge volcano towered over Hade's village. On the peak of the mountain lived the mountain spirit. When the mountain spirit spoke, the earth rumbled and smoke filled the air. Sometimes burning lava poured down the mountainside. Hade said a prayer. Mountain spirit, send us rain. Our beans and squash plants are dying. So this is another legend. It's like the one about the uh, person that was sleeping and turned into a mountain. She picked up a clay pot and walked to the lake. Hade greeted the other village girls who were also collecting water. The once beautiful lake was almost dry. She filled the pot and returned to the garden. As she worked, a lovely blue hummingbird flew in front of her. You must go to the mountain spirit and ask for rain, the hummingbird said, and you must take a gift. Her father had told her the small birds knew the small birds brought messages from the mountain spirit. How they knew she must listen. The path is very dangerous, she said. I will guide you, the hummingbird replied. Hade ran back to the hut. What is it, my daughter? Her mother asked. Hade told her parents what had happened. Her mother smiled and said, a blue hummingbird flew over your crib when you were born. It was a special sign. Why don't the rains come? Hade asked her father. Years ago, we had rain and good harvest, but the people forgot to thank the mountain spirit. We did not take gifts to the mountain. Now it is angry, and there is no rain.
Remember, a legend is when you try to explain something because you don't know the science about it. So this is a very, very old story before they had lots of good information about weather. I can take a gift of food, Hade said. His, her father shook his head. A girl cannot climb the mountain. You will fall from the cliffs like a bird without wings. Our gardens are dying, her mother said. Soon we must leave our home in search of food. That will be the end of our way of life. Hade grew sad. She knew the people did not want to leave their village. They had lived at the foot of the volcano for many generations. This had been the home of their ancestors. When her parents were gone to market, Hade walked in the garden wondering if she could, what she could do to help her village. The blue hummingbird appeared again. The mountain spirit will listen to you, the hummingbird whispered. Can I do it? Hade asked. Her father had said she might fall from the cliff like a bird without wings, but if she didn't go, the entire village would suffer. Yes, I will go, she decided. She warmed a bowl of beans and squash and sprinkled chili powder on the food. Oh, I hope this pleases the mountain spirit, she said. She gathered a reboso around her shoulders and followed the hummingbird up the narrow path. Suddenly, the mountain shook and the boulders came crashing down. This way, the hummingbird cried. Hade jumped aside and the boulders missed her. Finally, they arrived at the home of the mountain spirit where butterflies danced among the, a rainbow of flowers. A waterfall cascaded into a clear blue lake. Why have you come? The mountain spirit asked. Thunder and smoke filled the sky. I came to ask for rain, Hade replied. Without rain, our plants will die and we will starve. Your people no longer honor me, the mountain spirit said. I have not forgotten you, Hade answered. I brought you a gift. She uncovered the bowl of beans and squash. squash. A pleasant aroma filled the air. It smelled really good. The mountain spirit was pleased. You are a brave girl. I will send rain and I will give you a gift. You may have the food the ants store in the cave. Hade looked at the ants scurrying on the ground. The ants carry pebbles, Hade said. Look closely, the mountain spirit said. Hade fell, fell on her knees. What are you carrying? She asked the ants. This is corn, said one ant. Taste it, another ant said, offering her a kernel. Hade chewed the corn. Ooh, what a sweet flavor, she cried. Where does it come from? It grows here on Corn Mountain. We gather the grains and store them in a cave. Come with us. Hade followed the ants into the cavern. On the floor, she found piles of corn. Corn is a gift from the mountain spirit, the ants said. Take all you want. Hade gathered the corn in her rebozo. She thanked the mountain spirit. She thanked the hummingbird for guiding her, and she thanked the ants for sharing their corn. Then she carefully made her way down the mountain with her prize. Her parents had returned from the market. Hade entered her home and spilled the corn on the floor. What is this? Her father asked. Corn! Hade cried. The mountain spirit gave it to me. Here, taste it! Her father chewed a few dry kernels and the corn softened with each bite. It was sweet and tasty. Good, said her father, but hard to chew. I will boil the corn in a clay pot, said her mother. It will make posol. When the posol was ready, Hade's father tasted it. Wonderful, he exclaimed. We must thank the spirit mountain for this food. They scattered kernels of corn in their garden and said a prayer of thanks. That afternoon, clouds gathered on the mountain peak. Soon a gentle rain fell. Later in the season, corn plants pushed through the earth. The corn tassels blossomed. Soon tender ears of corn appeared on the stalks. Elotes, Hade said as she picked up picked the corn. That evening they ate corn, beans, and squash flavored with red chile. When the corn was dry, Hade placed some kernels in a metate and cr crushed them with a mano. She sprinkled water on the cornmeal. The gruel was thick like dough. Masa, Hade said. She patted the masa back and forth in her palms until it was flat and round. Then she placed it on a hot stove near the fire. While they were eating, they smelled the masa cooking on the hot stone. What is that sweet aroma? asked her father. The masa, Hade cried. There on the hot stone lay the freshly baked bread. She picked it up and offered it to her parents. Her father ate a piece. Mmm, very good. Delicious, her mother exclaimed. 
What shall we call this bread? Frade thought for a while. I'll call it a tortilla. I am proud of you, her father said. Remember, the title of the story was The First Tortilla. We must share this with our neighbors, her mother added. In the following days, Hade went from home to home, teaching the women how to make tortillas. The corn plants grew. Corn tortillas became the favorite food of the people. Now the villagers did not have to leave their home. During the harvest fiesta, the people held a ceremony to thank the mountain spirit for giving them corn. They also thanked Hade, the girl who had baked the first tortilla. I hope you like that story. I did. It's a neat legend. It's a story made up to figure out how did this all happen a long time ago. The weather impacts us a lot. If we don't have enough rain, our crops don't grow. If we have too much rain, we have floods. And we can't control the weather. We just have to do our best to live with what happens and hope everything will be okay. Bye. Have a good day.